Did you know that one teaspoon of a neutron star could weigh up to 6 billion tons? And neutron stars can also transition into black holes under certain circumstances. They are supported against collapse by something known as neutron degeneracy pressure. But if the mass of the neutron star exceeds a certain limit, this limit is known as the tolman oppenheimer volkoff limit, which is usually around 2 to 3 times the mass of the sun, then this pressure can no longer support the star against gravitational collapse, and it'll ultimately collapse into a black hole. This typically happens when a neutron star gains additional mass, either through accretion from a companion star in a binary system, or by merging with another neutron star or a black hole. Now here's how it works. Our Schwarzschild radius refers to the radius within which all the mass of an object must be compressed for it to become a black hole. I've done a video on this before. If a neutron star's mass becomes large enough that its radius shrinks to the point where it lies within the Schwarzschild radius, then it's going to ultimately collapse into a black hole. Resolar masses is roughly the upper mass limit of a neutron star before it can no longer support itself against gravitational collapse. Beyond this point, neutron degeneracy pressure is insufficient to hold the star up, leading to collapse into a black hole like we mentioned earlier. Now, this exact value for this threshold really depends on the internal structure of the neutron star, which is still an area of active research. So next time you're looking at a neutron star, try and guess if it's going to collapse into a black hole or not.